Okay, welcome to Find Truth 88. You know, tonight I've got a I've got a question to ask you guys. And I want you to think about this. I, w I want you to go to scripture. I want you to pick up your scripture and read the word of God for yourself. Okay? I don't want you to rely on Marcus. I don't want you to rely on other people and prop people up on a on a pedestal. I don't want you to prop Marcus up on a pedestal. My job here, my purpose for being here is not to be on your pedestal, okay? I want you to grow up and mature in the things of God. I don't want you to be a groupie because when you're someone's groupie, you're in a yoke of bondage. You're in a codependency. And this is how cults form. This is the glue that holds cults together. It's codependency. Is that it, that's the yoke of bondage there where you're so you're you're so caught up with your teacher or your group or your clique that you totally lose sight of Bible truth. You totally lose sight of Jesus Christ. And this was the issue. See, nothing new is under the sun. It was the issue in the Old Testament uh, on the days of Moses. When they worshiped that golden uh, image, that, that uh, golden calf, bell worship, they did it in the name of God. And we see the same thing. I say nothing new is under the sun because we see the same thing today. We have so many folks here on social media. They come here in the name of Jesus, but they worship their favorite teachers. So I, I, I just want to I want to make that point clear. Learn to go to the scriptures. Don't get caught up in all this back and forth. Because we can settle the truth very easily and settle that in our hearts very easily by simply open, opening up the scriptures. Now, let me ask you this question. Pertaining to the woman who was caught in adultery. Because a lot of folks, they want to point to this. And so let's, let's, let's simply point to this. After Jesus told her, Number one, he said, I, 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 "Where are your where are your condemners at? Where where are those who condemn you?" They're that okay. They they took off because they knew they had issues and sin in their life, so they bounced. And then Jesus said, "Neither do I condemn you." But he didn't finish there. Most most who teach that they stop right there and they move on because. You know, there's an interior motive why they always stop there and leave out the next thing that Jesus said. Jesus turned to this woman and said, now go and sin no more. Now, was Jesus telling her to go and live the rest of her life without committing a sin ever again? Of course not. So Jesus was telling her right there, if you if you look at the context there, Jesus was telling this woman, now go and depart the sin of fornication and adultery. Go and commit fornication and adultery no more. So let me ask you this question. And it's not a trick question. How many more records, how, how many more times is it recorded in the scripture that this woman was caught in adultery? Was, is it, is, was she caught in adultery uh, uh, two more times after that? After Jesus told her to go and sin no more? Was it three more times? Was it four more times? How many more times was she caught in adultery after Jesus told her to now go and commit the sin of adultery no more? How many more times was it recorded? But yet we have these people here, and let's take this another step farther. How many times was it recorded that this woman was caught in adultery again and again and again and again? And on top of that, she had a flock 
and she preached that you can live the way you want to live and do what you want to do. So let me say this, a, a person who is bound in unrepentant sin, like Todd, he's, he's, a, he's a great example of this, is disqualified and not qualified to teach the word of God. What is a unrepentant adulterer going to teach me? A person who has no discipline in their life. This is why the followers of Jesus Christ were called disciples, right? They were called disciples because they were disciplined followers of Jesus Christ. But today we got folks teaching the opposite. And they, they, wanna, they want to make you believe that if you follow Jesus Christ, if you seek him with all of your heart, as spoken in Jeremiah 29, 13, which goes on to say, if we seek him with all of our heart, we'll find him. But they don't want to find Jesus. Why? Because they want to stay in their sin. If they, if they truly find Jesus, then Jesus will give them his very Holy Spirit. I don't want to get into this here, the Holy Spirit. This is, we have a church today that, are, that loves to deny the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be Holy Spirit led. All I want to do is pray this prayer and that's it. We have a, 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 a church today, a good portion of the church today that wants to talk about a one-time prayer and that's it. That's where the relationship with Jesus ends. But I don't want to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ taking me from glory to glory. I don't want to talk about how the Holy Spirit, if I'm led of the Holy Spirit, that I'm not under the law. That's Galatians 5.18. And you know, I've, I've taught this for, this is fascinating. I've taught this for nine years here on social media. For nine years, I have taught be led of the Holy Spirit. I've consistently taught this for nine years. Nine years. Be Holy Spirit led. 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 Be led of the Holy Spirit. Anyone who's watched me for, for, this, for any period of time, you've heard me say this over and over and over and over and over and over. Why? Because it's the key to our Christian walk. Jesus said, I will not leave you alone. I'm, I will give you my comforter, my very spirit. It's John chapter 14. Verse 26 goes on to say that the, that the Holy Spirit is our comforter, our counselor, our teacher. And he will bring all things to remembrance whatsoever that the Lord has taught us. Now, also in this same nine year period, you have not once heard Marcus say that we are saved by the law because we are not saved by the law. And you've actually, to the contrary, you've heard me say the opposite. You've even heard me say that not even the Old Testament saints were saved by the law. Even the Old Testament saints had to wait to Jesus' death on the cross. So you've actually heard me say the opposite for nine years. We see that Paul says in, in Galatians chapter 3, that no man is saved by the law. No man is saved by the law. And Paul re, uh, uh, reiterated that again, uh, reiterated that again, excuse me, in Galatians chapter five, stating that no one is saved by the law. And if you are expecting and, and looking to the law for salvation, then you have severed yourself from Christ. So you've heard me teach this over and over and over and over and over and over again for nine years. Marcus, why are you saying this? So let me make this point here. So if I've been teaching, be led of the Holy Spirit for nine years, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ for nine years, you've heard me teach this. How could I possibly be teaching to anyone that were saved by the law. 
That's a lie. Galatians 5.18, if you are led of the Holy Spirit, you're not under the law. This is where we receive salvation. We see this in Matthew 27. After Jesus gave up the ghost, this is verse 50 and 51, we see that the veil of the temple was torn, was rent in twain, as it says in the King James Version. That veil in the temple separated the Holy Spirit of God from mankind. Jesus' death on the cross removed that separation. See, this is as easy as putting Lincoln logs together. If you, if, you can, if you can put some Legos together, then you can understand this. Unless you are off on the side in adultery and fornication and you don't want to let it go. Jesus' death on the cross, Jesus shedding his blood, removed that separation from the Holy Spirit and mankind. See, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit hovered over individuals and believers, but the Holy Spirit didn't indwell and live. See, the, 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 the Old Testament saints, they were not the temple. But now today, here, us, we here today after Jesus, death on the cross, those who truly believe and give their lives over to Jesus Christ, he gives us his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. He is Lord over our life. This is where the disagreement is at with many of these folks who uh, preach a once prayed, always saved doctrine. They leave out the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, unless you're Hebrews, Hebrew roots, or whatever, because we, we know that a lot of Hebrew roots folks, they believe in being saved by the law, the law. Okay, that's garbage. The law doesn't save anyone. Now, then you got these other folks over here on the other wing, on the other extreme wing, the complete opposite of Hebrew roots is these once prayed, always saved folks. And see, and this is what James was addressing in the book of James. And see, and this is what Paul addressed. They were both addressing the extremes of the time because you had these groups that were saying you're saved by the law and then you had the other, these other groups who were saying you can live the way you want and do what you want. And it wasn't just James addressing those folks. It was also Jude speaking of those who turn the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ into lasciviousness, into a moral living into godlessness. Okay, so they were addressed. Both folks were addressed. So if we are truly saved, let's get back to this in Matthew 27. If we have truly given our lives to Jesus Christ, if we are truly saved, then we, we have received Jesus Christ into our hearts. With that comes his very Holy Spirit. Okay? So you can't say Marcus is saying you're saved by the law when for nine years, Marcus has been preaching consistently, be led of the Holy Spirit. That's like oil and water. They don't mix. The spirit and the law don't mix. This shows you how illiterate many of these Bible, quote unquote, Bible teachers are here on YouTube. They don't even know that. They don't even understand that the spirit and the law don't mix. They they are so illiterate that they don't even understand the, the, the most rudimentary parts of the faith. Let me take you to Galatians chapter five. For those of you who are hungry for Jesus instead of being hungry for booty. Because this, this is, this. let's get down to the nitty gritty here. We got folks here on the internet. It's all about sex, lies, and videotape. We got folks here on the internet. They not hungry for Jesus. They hungry for booty. They not hungry for Jesus. They hungry for tail. They chasing tail on the internet. 
They're not hungry for Jesus or truth. They're hungry for money because they don't have a job. So they sit in their cars making videos from parking lots because they are not employed. So they come on camera as swindlers. Here to take your earned money. They come on they come on camera using their channel as a dating app. They have a whole dating pool where they're 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 and this is what predators do. Predators watch. Predators will scope out. Predators will will come up with a game plan. See, adultery and fornication doesn't just you don't stumble into that, right? You don't you're not like see, it's not like a person who commits adultery or fornication, it's not like they're just walking down a sidewalk somewhere and then they trip over a, a, a crack in the sidewalk or something and they stumble and, and then they, they start to fall and they bump into a female and then that female starts to fall backwards and then her panties flies off and then while the same time that's happening, uh, the dude's pants fall down and then whoop, and then, ooh, 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 you know, and it, look, it don't work that way, right? Hey, what's your name? I, hey, hey, no, no, it don't. It doesn't work. See, adultery and fornication is premeditated sin. I've planned this. I've planned the scenarios. I've worked out how I'm gonna do this. I've, 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 I've called the airline. I've, I've, I've uh, reserved my tickets to go to Louisiana to go sleep with the whore. See, that's all planned out. You don't accidentally stumble into that. It's premeditated sin. Do you know here? You know, if if you if you go to plan to murder someone versus accidentally killing someone, it's a whole different penalty, right? And see, this is what these folks, they, they, they try to make it like, they try to blur, uh, muddy the waters to make you believe that the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ is irrelevant in the walk of the believer. And when you read Paul's writings, all through Paul's writings, you see that he speaks of living a Holy Spirit led life be led of the holy spirit the book of galatians the book of ephesians you can't get through those two letters without having the understanding unless you're blind crippled or crazy unless you're just completely willfully ignorant and don't want to hear the truth like those folks that were spoken of in isaiah chapter 30 who said stop bothering us with the Holy One of Israel. We don't want to hear the truth. Nah, 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 wait, ah, no, I don't want to hear it. Stop bothering me with the truth. That's the only way you get through those letters without having the understanding that a true follower of Jesus Christ, one who has truly given their life to Jesus Christ, one who is truly saved, is Holy Spirit filled and led. John chapter 14, same thing. John chapter 16, verse 13 says that the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God will lead us to all truth. So with all that being said, let me take you to the Galatians. Just wanted to lay that foundation down for those who are hard of hearing and, and always go off with this straw man argument trying to accuse anyone who believes in being Holy Spirit led that they're trusting in the law. Let me say it again. You cannot mix the spirit and the law. They don't mix. That is the most rudimentary, fun, uh, uh, fun, fundamental, elementary part of the faith. If you can't understand that, it's because you blind. And then, see, as we see here on the internet, it's the blind who go out and lead the blind. <clears throat> so, Galatians chapter 5. I want to take you to verse 4. 
to those who always want to go and accuse everyone of you, 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 you say we're we're saved by the law. We're saved by the law. Well, let's here it is. Let's take you to verse four. I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version. And I hope you're in the word of God for yourself. Don't just trust that Marcus is reading the scripture correctly. I could be lying to you. I could be like a lot of these false teachers here on the internet who are picking and choosing what little part that they want to share to you and then they hide the rest. Okay? Get in the habit of picking up the word of God for yourself. Do you trust some stranger with your wallet? Let me say this. Do you trust some stranger with your, your routing number and your account number and your bank account? I mean, some of y'all dumb enough that you do. Okay, but let's get to the point that I'm trying to say. So if you, if you guard your checkbook and you're guarding your wallet, if you lock your doors at night, if you have a security system in your armament, if you value uh, your personal belongings to the point that you will guard it and won't just, do you lock your car doors? Or do you just give your key away and then say, hey, anyone can drive the car? Do you have a sign in your front yard saying, here's my keys, here's my house keys, here's my car keys. Hey, whenever you want to trip to the store, just go ahead and take my car. You can, you, no, do, you, do you value? So why wouldn't you value your walk with God and your relationship with God more than you value your car or your home or your house or your wallet or your checkbook? What's more valuable to you? Let me ask you this. What's more valuable in your life? Is it your relationship with Jesus Christ or do you value your, your bank account more than Jesus? Do you value sleeping with whores more than Jesus Christ? Do you value sleeping with underage girls like a lot of these preachers here on the internet who sit behind the wheel of a car doing videos? and pulling in the money because they know that their income is all about the amount of videos that they make. They are motivated to make videos only because they make money from them or they get attention from them or both. So now with that said, <clears throat> Uh, Galatians chapter 5, and I know you're following along here. Verse 4, I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version. Paul speaking here. You have been severed from Christ if you seek to be justified, that is, declared free of guilt, uh, free of the guilt of sin and its penalty, and placed in right standing with God through the law. So in other words, if you are trusting the law... If you think that the law is going gonna, is gonna to save you, then here you, you have placed, uh, you, you, you have fallen out of grace. And have, and, and, see, let me, let me, let me just back up because I don't, I don't, I, I want you to clearly, clearly hear this. You have been severed from Christ if you seek to be justified, that is, declared free of guilt, of, uh, the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with God through the law. You have fallen from grace, for you have lost your grasp on God's unmerited favor and blessing. So Paul clearly saying there, if you think the law is going to save you, then you've lost your understanding of God's grace. But we're not going to just stop right there, right? We want to continue to, to understand what Paul is saying. Verse 5. Oh, drum roll. Come on now, because these feminine false teachers who come to you talking about nanosecond prayers... They won't give you the, the whole, they won't read to you the whole, uh, the, the whole context of what Paul is saying here. And this is why I'm also saying don't trust Marcus. I want you to get in the habit of picking up the scripture. See, Marcus ain't here talking, uh, getting money from you, okay? Marcus ain't here trying to get, get in your panties. Marcus has not collected one dime in the nine years he's been here on social media from any of you folks, not one dime, not one dime. So my motivation is not your money and my motivation is not what's in between your legs. Okay, can, can, we, just, can we just go ahead and settle that right there? 
Verse 5. Paul continuing here. After just saying, if you are trusting in the law, then you have lost your understanding and grasp of God's grace in your life. Verse 5, though. Here we go. For we, not relying on the law. This is Paul still speaking. We, not relying on the law, but... Through the strength and power of the Holy Spirit, by faith, are waiting confidently for the hope of righteousness, the completion of our salvation. We're not trusting in the law. We're trusting in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ who gives us freedom. Let's continue on. We want, so I'm going to take you to verse 16 as I did in the previous message here. Verse 16, Paul continuing on here, but I say, walk habitually. In other words, have a habit of walk. Make this your habit and lifestyle that you walk in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. The same very Holy Spirit that Jesus died on the cross for and removed that veil that he may dwell in your hearts, our hearts. And we see that that took place 53 days later after Jesus' death on the cross, 50, day late, 50 days later after the resurrection. That's why they call it Pentecost. The day of P Pentecost took place where the Holy Spirit filled the hearts of the true believers and they became the temple. It's the same process that the Lord uh, does today. When we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we become the temple. He puts his Holy Spirit inside of us and his Holy Spirit begins to lead our walk. And when we go astray, he pulls us back in line. And see, if I hit a pothole in the street, and then the next day I hit the same pothole. See, the first day is a mistake, but the second day I know it's there. I can't keep claiming it's a mistake if I keep running into the same pothole. No, that's called being stupid. We got, and this is what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 7. He talked about that stupid, foolish man who built his house upon sand. And he talked about that wise, prudent, practical man. They both were hearers of the word, but the wise man was a hearer and a doer of the word. Same thing that James was talking about. Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. James preaching the same exact message word for word that Jesus preached on the Sermon on the Mount. So if you want to call James a false teacher, then you are also calling Jesus a false teacher. And if you are that stupid as a follower and supporter and a groupie cult supporter of these people, then now you are aiding and abetting these false teachers' lies. Like Todd, like Tim, and like all these other sissy people who come on camera to rob you of your money. They are modern day Money changers. But I say unto you, walk habitually. This is Galatians 5, 16. Walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts, or you can say God and his word, God and his commands. So when we live a Holy Spirit life and we, when we allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide our walk, we will not respond. We will not give in to our flesh and do what our flesh wants, like go and walk in adultery. Instead of doing that, we will now fight for our marriage. This is, I mean, I, I can give, and I've given you this testimony. I'll say it again. This is what the Lord did in Esther and I's marriage. Our mar For the first eight years, our marriage was a wreck. Two rebellious individuals who wanted to do things their way. And that's why we constantly ran into the brick wall over and over and over. That's why I constantly fell down the stairs over and over and over. And it wasn't no stuntman falling down. No, it was me falling down the stairs. It was me having the bumps and bruises. 
<clears throat> but there came a point in time when I came to the end of myself and said, Jesus, I want you to change and transform me. Take me from glory to glory. No, I'm not. No, I'm not perfect today, but I'm here to tell you. It says in the scripture, when a righteous man falls, even if he falls seven times, he rises again. A true righteous individual, a true follower of Christ will not relax in sin and will not continually show back up in the same. See, and that's why I brought up the point about the woman who was caught in adultery. How many times does the scripture record afterwards that she was caught in that same sin again and again and again and again? How many times does it record that she came on camera asking for your money? How many times does it come on? Uh, does it does it record in the scriptures that she was preaching to a flock while she stayed in her adultery and fornication? Or begging for your money, had a PayPal button or whatever, the PayPal of that time, whatever you want to call it. No. So Paul goes on in Galatians 5, 19 through verse 23 to give us the difference between walking in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit that produces in our life. And it's the same thing that Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter 7. You will know them by their fruits. I always hear folks say, oh, you, you can't, you, 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 you don't know what's in a person's heart, but you can see their fruit. Jesus said it himself. You argue with Jesus? Yeah, most people are. Most people argue with Jesus, point blank. And then Paul gave the, uh, the, the other side of this, walking in the works of the flesh. Those who have given their lives to their own lustful desires. Adultery, fornication, uh, lying tongue. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, you can read that. It's verses 19, 19 through 21. Gossip. Just walking in the works of the flesh. And Paul went on to say, sexual immorality. He went on to say, unforg you know, that unfor you know, basically walking in a bitterness and unforgiveness. He went on to say, those who do such things, those who have given their lives over to this lifestyle shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're going to reject the Holy Spirit, if you're just going to have a form of godliness and deny the Holy Spirit's power thereof, that's 2 Timothy 3, 5. He warned us that folks would do that. They would have an outside form of godliness but inwardly, they're deniers of the Holy Spirit. They come to you dressed as harmless, innocent, gentle sheep. Wolves dressed as innocent sheep. That's why false teachers and deceivers always come to you playing the victim card. So that's the word of God. I'm going to share the word of God. I'm going to share the truth. Make a habit of stop making it about people uh, uh, who are on a TV screen or on your phone, people that you see all the time. So too many times we trust folks just because we think we know them. Don't trust Marcus. Trust Jesus. Trust his word. Trust the written word. Many of y'all folks, you're too lazy to even open up the scriptures for yourself and do study for yourself. You're being spoon-fed by a teacher all the days of your life. You'll never grow to maturity if that's what you continue to do. But that's where they want you. It's like many of these counselors. They want you to always rely on them. That way they can watch that clock and keep making the money. They don't want you to get free. They don't want you to uh, break free of the yoke of bondage. They want you to always rely on on them so they get paid it's like the health care uh, uh, system they want you to stay sick that way you always rely on their medicine their doctor their prescriptions i don't want you relying on fine truth 88 i want you to have an understanding of god's word 
cry out for Jesus Christ and his, and his Holy Spirit, which he died on the cross to give you. Don't say you're accepting Jesus if you're going to deny his Holy Spirit. Because that's not salvation. Well, that's my message tonight because I just want to share the word of God with you and point you to Jesus, not to Marcus. Forget Marcus. I want to point you to Jesus. Uh, before I end tonight, I, I want to make a, a mention that, uh, and I put this post up uh, on the community post. I put this post up in the last two messages that I put up about how Todd has uh, uh, filed a frivolous complaint, a, privacy, a frivolous complaint privacy complaint uh to youtube and you know uh many of you guys mentioned that he's done this before to many others and some of you said he you uh, he had done it to you well i'm asking uh those of you that this has happened to uh would you send me the email that youtube sent you the complaint uh from from todd that you received and I want to collect those emails because obviously, you know, when, when you have a predator, a predator has a uh, pattern of doing something and they do it over and over and over and over. It's very deceptive. That's what predators do. They have they have patterns. OK, they have lifestyles and patterns. And so this is just something that he uses and, do, and he does. And he's done it over and over and over and over again. So if you would just send me the email. Uh, that YouTube sent you of the complaint that he has fri frivolously filed against you. And I want to collect as many of these as I can. If I do get uh, uh, you guys to send those to me, and I'll go ahead and submit those over to YouTube to make them aware that he is gaming the system for his own personal use and gain to make other people keep their mouths shut. To, or to attempt to silence people. Uh, I'm not here to serve Todd. I'm here to serve God. I'm here to serve Jesus Christ. You know, I've had many people make videos about me. Even Todd's creepy friend named Kevin. I mean, he, he looks like a, a, a walking mugshot. The guy has no life in him because he has not received Jesus Christ into his life. He just professes Jesus Christ. You know, I defend my wife. I'll stand by her and I defend my wife. But we got like Kevin, he defends Todd. So something's really creepy about that. You know, I understand men who stand up and defend their wives, but I'm not understanding this, this notion of men defending other men. Let, let, let my doctrine, let the doctrine that I teach defend me. I don't need other folks running around every other second, every other second, just hovering and watching and stalking and all this. Stuff. And there's a lot of stalkers out here. I mean, they'll go to other people's channels. They'll make multiple uh, YouTube channels to go and stalk folks. And this is what this Kevin person did. He did this all in the name of Todd. He stalked me in the name of Todd. Make, created five different channels over the years and stalked me to defend Todd. Now that kind of energy, I'll do that for my wife, but I'm not going to do that for another man. But anyway, I'm kind of veering off here. So if you would send me these frivolous uh, complaints because you know YouTube will give you the notification and the emails and I'll collect those and I'll submit that to YouTube and make them aware that this individual is using that tool just to prop himself up and being deceptive, okay? So if you would do that, I'd appreciate that. Uh, until next time, I just pray that the grace, peace, and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And I just encourage you to get into the word of God and, 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 and get into the prayer closet. The Holy Spirit gives us revelation, knowledge, and understanding of his truth. We don't get that from other people. And thank God for teachers. Thank God for pastors. Thank God for the ministry. But we can't just rely on other people. We have to seek God for ourselves and have a personal relationship with him if we ever expect to mature and grow up 
in the fix.